Hey everyone, so I came across a story that really grabbed my attention. It's from Only Sky, and it's about an art history professor who was supposedly fired for showing certain images of the Prophet Muhammad. And uh, we're not talking about uh, Charlie Hebdo um, satirical cartoons or something like that, which I've also defended in the past. We're talking about tasteful representations of the prophet that are hundreds of years old. Uh, we all probably know that there are certain prohibitions against uh, depicting the prophet Muhammad in certain forms of Islam, but that wasn't always the case. And you can go back into art history and find Images that show the prophet, uh, sometimes the workaround painters would use is to paint a white veil over the prophet's face. But you can find images where they just show the prophet's face unveiled. And these were paintings done out of reverence by devout Muslim artists. And so the art history professor gave a warning to people who might be sensitive to that kind of thing in the class and showed the images and there was a lot of uh, backlash and it looks like he was ultimately fired because of it. And uh, both as a non-believer and as an art lover, this really infuriates me. So I figured I'd share this story and read it for you guys. And so, once again, it's from Only Sky. It's by Hemant Mehta, and it's dated January 6th, so just uh, two days ago as I'm recording this. And it's entitled, Art History Professor Fired for Using Ancient Paintings of Muhammad in Class. And then the, uh, the subheading is, Hamline University Administrators Have Taken the Coward's Way Out, Caving In on the Demands of Zealots. An art history professor in Minnesota was fired after showing students an ancient depiction of the Prophet Muhammad in class. The dismissal came after a Muslim student complained to administrators that the act was offensive and disrespectful. Though school officials eventually agreed, the whole controversy has raised important questions about whether potentially offensive content should be censored from students if there's a risk of violating their religious sensibilities. You may recall that in 2010, there was a massive uproar after cartoonists, bloggers, and even South Park began depicting Muhammad in both innocuous and purposely blasphemous ways. Since depicting Muhammad is considered taboo by many Muslims, the issue was whether their religious belief should override everyone else's freedom of expression. On the other hand, even if Muslims conceded that people had a right to draw whatever they wanted, was it worth drawing something just to get a rise out of an often maligned group? Over the years, there have been extremists who retaliated in the worst ways, as we saw in France with the Charlie Hebdo shootings in 2015. In 2020, a teacher who showed some of those offensive cartoons as part of a class on free speech was brutally murdered in the same country. And wow, I don't remember that story. This was just in 2020. Uh, a teacher was killed for showing some of the Charlie Hebdo uh, cartoons. I, I think I missed that, or maybe I covered it and it just slipped my mind. That's a hell of a thing to forget, if so. Anyway, uh, each act of faith-based vengeance leads to another rush of people drawing the image in the same, and that looks like a typo, and that continues in parentheses, or sometimes as a way to peacefully infuriate the kind of people who might be offended. That's why what happened at Hamline University in St. Paul this past October has been so unusual. It's nothing like those stories we're used to hearing. As Religion News Service explains, an unnamed art history professor was going to show students a quote-unquote treasured 14th century painting depicting the Prophet Muhammad's call to prophecy, as well as a second image from the 16th century. He told students in advance he was going to do this. He told them the images of Muhammad would be in the paintings. He also explained that the first painting was created by a Muslim scholar in reverence of the Prophet, 
because it was not taboo to depict Muhammad at the time. Finally, the professor told students they did not have to attend that class if they didn't want to. They weren't obligated to sit through that particular presentation. And then the next section discusses some details gleaned or gained by the student newspaper, the Oracle, which gained said details by reviewing a video they got their hands on of that particular class. In the video of the class, the professor gives a content warning and describes the nature of the depictions to be shown and reflects on their controversial nature for more than two minutes before advancing to the slides in question. The oracle was able to identify these two images using video of the lecture. The first was a 14th century depiction of the prophet receiving his first revelation from the archangel Gabriel. Created by Rashid al-Din, I think it is, a Persian Muslim scholar and historian, the other depicts the prophet with a veil and halo, so his face was even covered in that one. It was created by Mustafa ibn Vali, I think it is, probably butchering it, in the 16th century as part of an illustration of the Sayer i Nebi, definitely butchering that, The Life of the Prophet, an earlier Ottoman Turkish epic work on the life of Muhammad. And I probably shouldn't be using the word butcher given the context. Please, dear religious zealots, do not butcher me. I'm not worth it. Uh, anyway, why am I laughing? There's a quote here. I think it's from the professor. I am showing you this image for a reason. And that is that there is this common thinking that Islam completely forbids outright any figurative depictions or any depictions of holy personages. While many Islamic cultures do strongly frown on this practice, I would like to remind you there is no one monothetic Islamic culture, the professor said before changing to the slide that included these depictions. This was not about getting a rise out of Muslims. This wasn't done to be needlessly provocative. This was done purely to educate students and expose them to ancient works of art. The professor did everything he could have possibly done to warn students about what they were about to see and why he was doing it. And yet a student who also happened to be president of the school's Muslim Student Association complained anyway, arguing that the professor disrespected her. It was an unreasonable complaint from an unserious student. That alone wouldn't have been news. A couple of college students complaining about something isn't news, no matter how much right-wing websites would suggest otherwise. It was the school's response that made everything worse. A month later, the school responded in an email to students, condemning the instructor's decision as, quote-unquote, undeniably inconsiderate, disrespectful, and Islamophobic. Wow, really? Really? Isn't the spirit of higher education supposed to be teaching students to have an open mind and teaching them actual facts? I mean, they were tasteful images from art history, you know, created by actual devout Muslims. Uh, just crazy. And to call the teacher, the professor, Islamophobic... Because of it, I would, I'm not an overly litigious person. I would probably sue because of that. You're trying to do your job as an art professor, which involves showing paintings and art from throughout history, and you do so, and you even try to be sensitive and offer a warning. And it's the truth. There was a period where it wasn't taboo to show depictions of the prophet Muhammad. And he tried to be as nice and polite and, once again, sensitive as possible. And the school's got to throw him under the bus and call him Islamophobic for teaching the truth and showing some actual paintings. I mean, what's next? You're going to fire an art professor because he showed a picture of Michelangelo's David and a student was hurt because they have micropenis? Um, and, and that's Michelangelo, not the Ninja Turtle, but the uh, Renaissance painter. Is it Michelangelo or Michelangelo, which is more proper? I don't know.
and I actually took uh, art history classes. But to get back on track, that statement condemning the professor was from the dean of students. The instructor's contract was not renewed, and a spring semester class the instructor was supposed to teach was canceled. The art history professor was fired for teaching students art history, that's right, that involved the Prophet Muhammad. All because, despite plenty of warnings and a thorough explanation why certain images were going to be shown in class, and the opportunity to leave the class without penalty, some Muslim students couldn't handle it. There are valid discussions to be had about the usefulness of depicting Muhammad in various ways, in the name of free speech. If it hurts the feelings of peaceful Muslims, is it really worth it? Does having a right mean it must be exercised? What's the line between free speech and just being an asshole? As someone who once hosted a, and this is Hemet Mehta, of course, who once hosted a series of submitted Muhammad drawings in the name of free speech and free expression, I'll be the first to say I probably wouldn't do it again, because the point has been made and there are bigger problems to fight. I just don't see the benefits anymore. But I can't see a problem with what this professor did and how he handled it beforehand. And it continues, and I'm not alone. There's a petition to reinstate the teacher, started by a professor of Islamic art. And it explains rather well how censoring the artwork in the name of religious tolerance is, quote-unquote, imperiling equity in education for all students. Rather than having an academic discussion about these issues, the school is choosing instead to censor the topic and punish someone who took a responsible stance. Why cave to students who refuse to accept that even other Muslims have taken a different position? A leader with PEN America, which supports free speech and literature, wrote that, in quotes, this professor's contract should be renewed immediately, and Hamline administrators should take an opportunity to remind themselves what academic freedom means. And then it says RNS, which I think stands for Religious News Service, as was mentioned earlier, I think that's it, even spoke to professors of Islamic and Middle Eastern studies who firmly stood on the other side from Hamline. And here's a quote. To make blanket statements that this is prohibited, especially the image in question, is absolutely wrong, said Ali Asani, professor of Islamic religion and culture at Harvard. It shows a literacy about religion. I tell students we're going to be looking at Muslim devotional art, said Omid Safi, professor of Asian and Middle Eastern Studies at Duke University. I know some students may not have seen these before, and some may have even been told it's not done. But it's a historic part of tradition. Safi said he doesn't give students the choice to opt out, as the Hamline instructor did. And it ends with a final paragraph from Hemet. Nor should he have to. The purpose of college, at least in theory, is to educate students and expose them to ideas with which they may not be familiar. No professor should be fired for a thoughtful, justifiable lesson about Muhammad or any other subject just because a student refused to be educated and administrators prioritized her irrational beliefs over their school's mission. Here, here, you know, well said. Those administrators and that dean should be ashamed of themselves. It sounds like this professor is a good guy, trying to be sensitive, trying to be responsible, trying to teach art history, and the school throws them under the bus. Unreal. Unreal. I mean, the school must have known that the professor offered a warning, he offered students a chance to opt out, and that these weren't inflammatory political cartoons, you know, they were, uh, they were examples of devotional art from hundreds of years ago. And uh, they still caved to pressure and gave the guy the boot anyway. Yeah, I would say sign that petition, haunt those administrators of that dean on social media. Am I allowed to say that? But be respectful. But let them know what you think, you know? Uh, yeah. I don't know if it'll get the guy his job back, if he necessarily wants to work there anymore. But I think people should be held accountable for, you know, tossing a guy under the bus when he's trying to do the right thing. He didn't do anything wrong. 
With that being said, I'm going to call this episode a wrap. As always, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. You guys know the drill. You can like the Facebook page. You can follow me on Twitter, even though I'm not on there much. You can check out the YouTube channel. Maybe you're doing that now. If you'd like to support the show monetarily, which would be gratefully, which would greatly rather <laughs> appreciated, uh, especially now, as you guys probably know, strangely, my day job is uh, basically working construction and work has temporarily dried up. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash the week in doubt and support the show for as little as 99 cents a month. You can make a one time uh, PayPal donation, Phil Albertelli at paypal.com or is it Phil Albertelli at gmail.com? Something like that, okay? Um, or I think now on YouTube, there's a thanks button. It looks like a dollar sign with a heart around it that you can click on, I think, and make a one-time donation. You can find it under uh, any of the videos, I believe. All right, enough e-begging. All right, brothers and sisters, until next time.